let's actually start with Richard Dawkins calling one of Jordan Peterson's most speculative theories utter nonsense to his face. You, you once uh, showed in a lecture a picture of snakes spiraling around each other, snakes Oh, tails. yes. And, and you said something like, I think it's positively, you know, that, that is a representation of DNA. I think that's a rep I really do believe this, although it's very complicated to explain why. I really believe that's a representation of DNA. Yes, we could, let's leave that one, but I, 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 promise, rather, I, I promise I will return to that. Well, let, there's a lot of time because that, that seems to me to go to the heart of what may be a difference between us, this aesthetic. I mean, that, that, that idea that that in some sense represents DNA seems oh to me God. to be complete nonsense. Okay, I will, I will absolutely oh address my that. God. Okay. God. Okay, so let's jump to the clip where Peterson addresses this directly. And so, well, like I said, this is in the realm of wild speculation, but I know what Crick thought about the origin of DNA. Well, he thought he thought it was too complex to have evolved. Oh, oh what you mean? You mean the idea of it coming from from, uh, sorry, from, no, from I mean, outer space? Peterson is making a quick reference to one of the two people who discovered DNA believed it came from outer space because it was too complex to evolve. That's what Peterson's referencing here, but irrelevant to the snake point, although very interesting. And I know that's an infinite regress okay, then, problem. But, okay, that, that's what was... Okay, so that was <coughs> all that was behind that. that, you know, bit of speculation, which but I normally would do have never done. What's these coiling serpents? I, keep I think that under that. some conditions, people can... Vision can expand to the point where they can see down into the micro level. They can apprehend the micro level consciously. You think that our consciousness can extend down to the micro level, yeah. to the level of I do. Micro, the micro, micro, micro level of, yeah. of, 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 of DNA. In other words, he's saying that if you take enough psychedelics, your perception of the world can extend all the way down to like microscopic level in terms of seeing cells and DNA and whatnot. And here we get to the seven gram experience. Well, but, since we're on this topic, I have taken extremely high doses of psilocybin. Like four doses is enough basically to knock you out of your body. I, I wouldn't recommend it casually. I took seven grams three times and I had this shamanic experience. It was unbelievable and I don't even know how, I have no idea how to make sense out well, of it. Well, I believe that. I, I can quite understand you have a most extraordinary experience. I've, I've never taken such a drug, but I could imagine you have the most remarkable experience. But you've just said that you think that your consciousness can see into your cells and see this, this structure of DNA. That has got to be utter nonsense. I'm sorry. Well, it, it, like I said, I, I'm perfectly reasonable, willing to admit forthrightly that that is a highly speculative idea. Um, I guess I would only say in, in, in defense of that idea is that it is the case that consciousness can travel up and down levels of analysis in a real sense. And yes. it isn't absolutely inconceivable that that's not an expandable capacity under some circumstances. So here's what I think he means. For people who've never taken psychedelics, you know the meme where it's like when you're on drugs, you can just stare at a penny and it's very interesting. That's true. And for people who have taken psychedelics, you know that the reason why is if you're looking at like a penny, for example, when you're on psychedelics, things appear as if they have a lot more detail or they're in a higher resolution or there's patterns there that you wouldn't have been able to see previously. And it does seem like you're seeing something at like not a zoomed in lens in that, it, you know, it zooms in like you would a camera would zoom in, but you can see more detail in the same amount of space. So my understanding of what Peterson is saying is that if you take seven grams of mushrooms, which I have never done, then you push that ability to see detail all the way to its limits, which he thinks is or is claiming that it's down to the micro level where you can say DNA. Now, I don't know. Again, I don't know if that's true. That's the thing about psychedelics and using the experience as evidence, you know, in, in a discussion about the nature of reality is there's a purely experiential element that you have that you cannot articulate without having the experience yourself. But Richard Dawkins does offer a good criticism of Peterson here. That's actually very much in line with something Peterson says about Christianity. In this visionary experience, I could feel my consciousness go down these levels of analysis and I could see things that they appeared to me in my field of imagination. And I looked at them and I thought, that looks a lot like DNA. But you're an educated man who yes. already knows about DNA. Yes, these, these people didn't know these it was DNA. Didn't know about it. That's what's so... Oh no, they I mean, didn't know. It doesn't they... surprise me in the least that you could have a visionary experience and think you see your DNA in your yes. own cells. That, of course, is highly plausible. What yes, is not plausible, because I already know about it. Yes, what is not plausible is that somebody who does not know about it, an, an ancient Chinese sculptor, whatever it was, yes. who, who, working long before Watson and Crick discovered the structure of DNA, could possibly apprehend, could possibly apprehend it. That, that just isn't Fair wrong. enough. 
So the idea is if you already know what DNA is, then when you enter a dream or a psychedelic experience, because Peterson would claim that those are the same phenomenological planes of reality, or at least similar, the representations you're going to see are influenced by the culture you're in and by your own personal experience. So if you know what DNA is, you know, you're going to project it out. Just like if you see like a robot in your dream, well, people of the past wouldn't have seen robots per se. But because we know what a robot is, we can project it in a dream or a psychedelic experience. And you know, that can, you know, represent, well, what does a robot represent? Well, emotionlessness and whatnot. So the nature of the representation is going to be specific to your culture. And interestingly, this is exactly what Peterson says to a bunch of Christians when he claims that the book of Revelations, a part of the Bible itself, is the result of psychedelic usage. I believe, for what it's worth, and I don't know what you guys think about that, I think that Revelation, is a psychedelic account, literally. Oh, the book of Revelation. I really believe that, you bet, you bet. I think that the author of that had a psychedelic experience and all he did was write down what happened to him. No, it's and too that grounded might not in be the, right, but- It's too grounded in the Old Testament, right. the, the classic apocalyptic literature. <clears throat> I mean, it's- Half it's of it is quoting the book of Daniel. Why is that- why? He said half of it is quoting the book of Daniel. Why is that an objection? Yeah. Why is that an objection? He was grounded in that tradition and all of that tradition was, was made vivid in imagery during the experience. That's not, be, not certainly not beyond the, the, the confines of such experiences. So he's saying that the person who wrote the book of Revelations took a psychedelic drug and then wrote down his experience. And because he was grounded in a tradition, the representation that occurred in his psychedelic experience was related to that cultural context he was in. And that's exactly what Dawkins is saying about how the reason that you know that you saw DNA is because it already exists in your kind of cultural milieu that underpins your psyche or envelops your psyche or whatever. So it is extremely interesting. Now, how does this whole exchange between Peterson and Dawkins fit into, well, why is it even relevant? Essential to Peterson's kind of phenomenological worldview is the belief that psychedelic experiences and dreams both operate in the let's say, metaphorical substrate of individual psyches as well as the collective psyche or society or culture. Peterson talks about how we don't know where thoughts come from. That's a theme that constantly comes up. A thought appears in your head. What kind of ridiculous explanation is that? Where does it come from? Well, nowhere. It just appears in my head. Okay, well, that's not a very sophisticated explanation as it turns out, you know? And <laughs> So you might think that those thoughts, thoughts that you think, well, where do they come from? Well, they're often someone else's thoughts, right? Someone long dead, that might be part of it. Just like the words you use to think are utterances of people who've been long dead. And so you're informed by the spirit of your ancestors. That's one way of looking at it. And your motivations speak to you and your emotions speak to you and your body speaks to you. And it all does all that, at least in part, through the dream. And the dream is the birthplace of the fully articulated idea. And Peterson believes that the realm of psychedelics and the realm of dreams is the birthplace of thought, so to speak, and intuition. And, and that's where, you know, dream analysis comes in. Well, in that domain, ra since it's beneath rationality, it can't express itself in rationality. It can only express itself in metaphor. So at the bottom of a linguistic structure, there's something that's extra linguistic, and it tends to take form in metaphor and narrative and drama and that sort of thing. And that's kind of what is at the foundation of perception and the human experience, or at least of consciousness. Um, or at least that's my understanding of it. And so if it is the case that humans, if they take enough psychedelics, can have their consciousness expand so deep, you know, into your body or whatever, that the representation of DNA that you see gets put into a metaphorical context of twin snakes, and then therefore that's what, you know, people saw. It's like, that's pretty far out there, and... Uh, warrants further investigation let's say and if it turns out that religions are really the guises for near eastern fertility cults that use a lot of psychedelics uh so he, he releases that book in 1970 and he claims that uh christianity is the guise for a near eastern fertility cult and it's i mean i think it's very interesting then we'll need to uh revisit this idea but otherwise good luck and godspeed <laughs>